Howdy folks, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am your host, The Mighty Bjorn, and today for you have a bit of a Dungeons & Dragons video again, because today I'm going to talk about creating world history for your Dungeons & Dragons campaign. When you're designing, in my opinion, when you're designing a world, you should have some kind of baseline history that you can work off of um, that kind of explains how your world has been shaped how different kingdoms have been edged out, maybe even explain how different races have been uh, essentially created or evolved uh, throughout your world's history. I don't feel it has to be something extremely detailed, but it's definitely something that I feel you should do if you're creating a world. It kind of brings more life to the world. Uh, it could influence your stories or your campaigns, or you could create campaigns and stories around that world history. Things of that nature. And honestly, I think one of the best sources to really take influence from is actually from Robert E. Howard's The Hyborian Age. Um, now, Robert E. Howard, a brilliant writer, he created the Conan the Barbarian series. He created Call the Conqueror, uh, Solomon Cain. Uh, he wrote a lot of short stories over actually a sh really short period of time, even wrote some Western stuff. Uh, and it's really interesting how he approached it. And a lot of people feel that he is the father of low fantasy, which I'll get into here also in a little bit about that. But the first thing I want to discuss here with the Hyborian Age is you can actually go to the Cyberian's YouTube channel. And he's actually got an audiobook form of the Hyborian Age, as well as he's got a lot of other content from Robert E. Howard. I feel he's really good. I actually really like the work that he does. I listen to his the Conan novels that he has on his YouTube channel pretty often because I really enjoy the Conan stuff. Um, so go over, check out his channel. Now, that being said, he doesn't know me. He didn't ask me to do this or anything else. I'm just plugging his channel because I feel he really deserves it, to be honest. Now, just to give a quick highlight of what the Hyborian Age novel really consists of, and understand these are only footnotes. So this is not going to be in great detail because it's like an hour and a half long, but trust me, it's really worth the hour and a half, especially if you're interested in building your own Dungeons Dragons world and campaign. But the place he starts, Robert E. Howard starts, is actually with a prehistory where things are just kind of shaping out, if you will, and it, it's kind of giving you a prelude of what things are going to be like when actually the Hyborian Age happens. So understand that at the very beginning of the book, the Hyborian Age has not even begun yet. Now, what happens is, is there's a, an actual cataclysm, which changes the shape of the world. It kind of sounds like he kind of was, Robert E. Howard kind of sounded like he was um, influenced by the whole concepts of Pangea, where it was just kind of like one continent, and then there was a cataclysm that split everything apart, which after that, I believe there was another cataclysm, and then we get into the Hyborian Age. And one thing I want to point out, too, is if you really want to look really deeply um, into it and you you listen to the Hyborian Age, I recommend actually having a map, a, a Hyborian Age map for from Conan. So, and you'll understand why as I dive into it here in a bit. But so after the cataclysms, essentially you have the Hyborian Age. And this is essentially just a part of the map. It's not the full map. The full map is actually quite big. And what's interesting is, is during the Hyborian Age, he kind of covers how civilizations are building, how they're shaped, things of that nature, you know, essentially through storytelling and, and the different types of civilizations. Some of the civilizations that's talked about in the Hyborian Age novel are nothing more than savages and end up working their way up to being basically powerful militaries. And it's actually a time period of constant war in the world of Conan. And then one thing that was really interesting in actually listening to the Hyborian Age book is actually Robert E. Howard actually used a lot of geopolitics on how essentially where the wars were fought, how countries invaded, um, certain people being actually isolated 
um, which I'm going to touch base a little bit here, but know that I've actually done a video in the past discussing geopolitics. And I find it really interesting that when kind of following along with the map and listening to the Hyborian Age on Ravel, I could actually follow certain sections of it that he actually used geopolitics quite a bit and like where different invaders were coming from and how they were doing their invasions and things of that nature. And it was really interesting um, because you got to understand that mountains, rivers, things of that nature is going to influence how things are going to happen and how Cain's emperors, whatever, is going to go to war and how they're going to move their militaries and what kind of defenses are they going to have uh, essentially in the natural sense of defenses. So it kind of influenced what empires and militaries did really well and it influenced uh, what empires and, and militaries actually did poorly. Basically, he kind of judged his winners and looters, losers off geopolitics. Um, so I found that really interesting and there's actually parts where he points out like there's a section where it's supposed to be in the plains and that essentially one of the militaries actually marched through those plains uh, using cavalry, which is essentially a really interesting way to put it, that basically you just have this huge, massive army of cavalry just going, just essentially going through the plains like nothing because there would be nothing that would impede the movement of the cavalry outside of some type of man-made defenses to t try and break up cavalry forces. Another one that was really interesting is when he got talking about the Samaritans. The Samaritans is, you know, Conan, he's a Samaritan, and Samarian? Samarian, sorry. Uh, but when he talks about Samaria, Samaria is basically isolated and completely surrounded by mountains. And essentially, there was groups, they discuss groups that actually tries to go into the mountains and ends up never returning, which makes actually sense. And it essentially keeps the Samaritans uh, isolated and essentially allows them to kind of evolve and shape themselves. And they end up becoming a powerful military in itself. Uh, you know, towards the end of the Hyborian age, essentially the Samaritans just come out of the mountains and just start wiping the floor with everybody because all these different kingdoms, empires, and etc., had been going through decades, even centuries of almost nonstop war where the Samaritans were just kind of left alone because of being completely secluded in mountains. So essentially they would, they would come out of their mountains and pretty much find you know, kingdoms that were crumbling under their own weight. And essentially, this is how basically Conan would become king, uh, because essentially he would become pretty aware of the geopolitics as well as just the political climate of the different empires, kings, emperors, duts, uh, dukes, so on and so forth. Um, and this is kind of like a read in between the lines thing. You know, this isn't really highlighted in... Um, in the Hyborian Age book, but if, if you listen to the other books and, and catch up with the other books in the Conan series, it really does explain how Conan ends up becoming Cain, and essentially that's why Conan ends up becoming Cain. And it's really interesting how many empires rise and fall and uh, why they rise and fall and what ends up happening to them, because some of them it's not necessarily... Uh, they were not necessarily defeated by war. Some of them were just defeated by the own, their own weight, if you will. Now, with that being said, too, what's really interesting is, is the Hyborian Age, he would actually write past the Hyborian Age. And essentially, at the end of the Hyborian Age, there's another cataclysm, and essentially the world as we know it now is shaped. And I found that really interesting is that he kind of made like this pre-recorded history that would be unrecognizable to us and essentially wiped everything off the face of the earth. Um, and then earth, how we know it today, would be shaped. So it's really interesting how Robert E. Howard approached this. Um, 
uh, I got to, I do have to say is it, it does mark his brilliance. He, he was a really brilliant writer uh, for his time, especially because at his time, there wasn't really per se any fantasy writers. And a lot of people contribute him to the father of low fantasy and actually Lord of the Rings and actually um, Pirates of the Pirates of the Caribbean would actually be considered low fantasy as well as Conan and Call the Conqueror um, and Solomon Kane. That's all low fantasy stuff. Um, and I'm not going to get into too, de- too much death between low fantasy and high fantasy, but Dungeons Dragons is more of a high fantasy settings where the settings I just mentioned would be more of a low fantasy setting, um, which is why you don't see a whole lot of magic actually in those settings. The next thing I want to point out too is that Robert E. Howard actually did all this at least, well, it was over 20 years before the Lord of the Rings was actually written. Well, technically the Hobbit, because that was the first book in the series for the Lord of the Rings. So it's really interesting how he kind of came up with all this and, and shaped shaped everything how he did it and, and actually came up with like a recorded history for his world that would be used to influence his stories um, years before actually one of probably one of the most important versions of low fantasy was ever created. And uh, kind of makes me wonder if maybe Tolkien didn't take some inspiration from Conan in some cases, in certain areas, if you will, on like the idea of creating a history for his world, creating different languages, things of that nature for the Lord of the Rings. And that's actually one reason why I want to discuss this, because I feel that it is a good way to get inspiration for creating your own world history for your Dungeons and Dragons campaign. But anyway, folks, I think I'm going to wrap up today's video at that. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. Thank you very much for tuning in and have yourself a wonderful day.